Our next guests are a married couple from St. Louis, Missouri, and for the past decade, they've turned their own home into a community kitchen for the city's growing unhoused population. In fact, most of their home space is dedicated to this operation. In just three years, they've served over 150,000 meals, which is incredible. And get this, much of that has come from their own pockets, and that makes them good neighbors. Get it, Jesse. <laughs> Please welcome Riz and Fari, y'all. Give it up for them. So, Riz, this is truly a grassroots operation, right? Yes. Uh, we founded in 2013 uh, the organization. We were helping the school district, um, uh, school bags or school supplies or yeah. canned food. And slow and steady, we were just uh, putting our own money and already... Uh, and then slow and steady, we had volunteers. They started putting their own money for the food and supplies. We don't have any 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 kind of uh, corporates or and any kind of donations. And expanded into helping the unhoused community. Um, we were just really surprised to see the level of homelessness in St. Louis. And uh, talk about the 2020, immigrants that around, we Around helping. 2020, we saw after pandemic, there was so much food insecurity in St. Yeah. Louis. And already we, I believe that already everybody deserves food, shelter, water. Absolutely. And already, f forget about it. I'm sorry, I'm emotional. Uh, everybody should get it. They don't have food. Uh, they don't have, the people live in a horrible condition. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't get emotional so, but already when I'm talking and already in front of you, it's, it's, it's a lot. They, we all have everything we talk about, uh, weather, we talk about everything that is cold or hot or already it's, and already sitting in our homes, in a car, in our offices, but they have no food. They are sitting on the street, lying down in this crazy winter, and they are, uh, they are waiting for the food. They don't have food. I think it's perfectly fine to be angry about that. It's just a travesty. It's very tragic that like no human should have to go without those basic essential needs yes. in the first place. And that's why you get so angry about it, because it matters to you. Um, and Farah, it's more than just the unhoused community, though, right? Yes, uh, I think Riz's basic motto here is we'll help anybody, no questions asked, uh, because sometimes there are so many different programs that have loopholes that people need to jump through to get help. Yeah. With us, uh, we will help anybody and everybody. So we've helped, of course, the homeless that are very close to our hearts, but we've also helped migrants, refugees, immigrants, yeah. um, We've helped people coming out of prison transition into real life. We've helped people who've lost jobs during the pandemic. We've helped, uh, uh, you know, people who are having to decide whether they're going to pay the utility bill or put food on the table. Yeah. We've helped them. Uh, there's a big influx of uh, immigrants, refugees from Afghanistan uh, since 2021 in St. Louis. And uh, we provided hot meals to them. We've started helping the Ukrainians recently. Goodness. I mean, one, thank you so much for having the hearts that you have, but gosh, there's just, it's a reminder that there's so much need out there and so many people would love to help. So I love that we're talking to you and about this organization they all have. So St. Louis is your adoptive home, right? Because you said you got to Missouri and you were just like, wow, I didn't know this existed here. So you're from India, right? That is right. So uh, we both grew up in uh, middle class India, and there was a lot of socioeconomic disparity in our home country. Yeah. And we l learned from both our families to give back to the community. So yeah. when Farah, Farah came in 2005 to do MBA from WashU, uh, and I joined her later, I was in UK, I came back here. I never thought that I'll see that kind of poverty here, people without food and yeah. uh, food insecurity. And that's when, when we thought we have to we have to do something about it. So we added we 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 founded this organization in the memory of our son whom we lost in 2006. So already and then we we started helping the schools in 2020 in the pandemic hit, and every every all over the world was was on on their knees. So already we started making hot meals for the. For, for the homeless especially, and, and anybody in need. We don't ask questions. Um, Anna and Phil, have you ever volunteered at a food kitchen or did yeah. anything like this, work yeah, like this? Yeah, in high school, yeah, in, yeah. in Washington, D.C., yeah. Well, what and an important time to learn that as a yeah, kid, to incredible. really, 
impact other people's lives. I'm so I, the the idea of service in in as as a as a form of your own of of I don't know of getting outside of yourself and it, it's it's such a healing power service. I think I, I, even my teenager now who has a community service at school, I think it gets you out of your own headspace and thinking forward and. It gives you so much hope in the face of hopelessness. I guess that's what's so beautiful about it. And Absolutely. hearing your story is so inspiring. And yeah, it's just extraordinary. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. All right, so your foundation honors someone special, right? So tell us about them. Yes, so uh, our son was a premature um, baby. He was 22 and a half weeks old when he passed away. And life was pretty dark, right? And I think what you learn through adversity is that you just get up and you do something. We couldn't help our son, but we are like we can help other children, right? So mm. uh, that is why little angel is meant for a child. All babies are little angels. They all need help. And we should all try and help any way we can. That was, that was the genesis of our foundation. So we started as a children's foundation. In 2020, we adopted homeless. In 2021, we, we included refugees coming from anywhere, not just Afghanistan, Iraq, or, or African countries. They're coming. We've been helping. We don't say no to anyone. Even somebody, there, was, there, there, was, there is an example of some uh, a couple. They came from somewhere from uh, Los Angeles, California itself. They moved. They were living in a car. And already, she, she reached out to me. She, she was a healthcare professional. She, she lost everything. She, she moved to St. Louis. And one, one day, she called me. She's looking, she, saw, she Googled, and already, she was looking for a food on Sunday, and already and she said, can I get some food? So I, when I went there and I gave her, so we were helping that, that woman with, with, with her husband the food for a month. After a month, I got a text from her that, Riz, I got a job. I don't need any help. How can I pay you back? And wow. uh, Pay it forward. This so is very amazing. I told her, the way you can pay, come to the table and serve. To the yeah. people we, 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 we feed, I want you. So next month, she's coming to the table and she's going to serve with us. Oh my gosh. What a beautiful thing you started there. So Riz, despite your success, you say that you're still facing growing pains, right? Yes. The, the reason is this, we, we can do a lot. We don't have any, we, everything is being done in, from our house. 70% uh, of our house has been you will, you go to a bedroom, whether you go to a restroom. We have supplies everywhere. <laughs> we have supplies everywhere. We have a space, private space, out of home. We, I can bring in corporates, for example, we bigger, can bigger. Scale. We can scale to an enormous level, uh, you know, because one, there is a lot of demand for the help that we are giving, especially because it's no questions asked. And two, there is a lot, lot more organizations that would get involved with us if we had a business address. Yeah. Um, our vision is to have like a community kitchen where we could serve meals several times a week. Yeah. Um, and where maybe uh, neighbors could gather and volunteer or cook with us. Absolutely. We love your commitment to St. Louis and our friends at Save A Lot are inspired by how you're doing a lot of good in your hometown by feeding those in need. So they are donating $10,000 to Little Angel. <laughs> Like, what you're doing is so beautiful. And I know it costs more than 10000 to get that, so I'm going to throw another 10 in there for you. Just because of you. And I think it's so important. And the fact that you don't ask questions and people fall on hard times, and to be able to keep their dignity, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I wanted to add something. Yeah. When I founded the organization, this organization, Little Angels Foundation, is not a faith-based organization, but we, my vision was that only to bring people from all faith and serve under one roof. So, so that yeah. serving is humanity. Mm -hmm. And that's what if somebody say, hey, can I give you $20 or $30 and something like that, I say, I want you to come and serve with me. Like just now you said that serving gives you something different than, mm -hmm. than you just paying something, right? Yeah, no, I grew up like that. The, um, and I guess whatever your faith is, I grew up with my faith saying you should always have a servant's heart. And because it is always thinking outside yourself because we can get trapped in our own, you know, we're our own lead characters, right? In our films. So like, so it's like you can get lost in your own egocentric world, but 
to put yourself out there and to think of somebody else, it actually is very healing, like you were saying. And you, not that your problems diminish, but you gain perspective. And perspective can be very healing. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. I love the work that y'all are doing. It's so important. If anybody wants to help, is there a way they can volunteer? Or like, is there a website or anything? We do have a website. Okay. Uh, it's uh, just www.littleangelsfoundation.org. Um, and we'd love for you to go and see a lot more stories out there of the people that we are helping. Oh, man, thank you so much.